The IRS is speaking out on recent criticism. It's getting the $80 billion in new funding it received as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick published an op-ed this morning on Yahoo Finance debunking lingering misperceptions about how this money is going to be used. Here to discuss, we've got former IRS Commissioner Charles Rosati. Charles, thanks so much for taking the time here with us this morning. Good first, morning. Glad to be here. Thank you. Certainly. First and foremost, you know, when we think about this funding and how it's going to be put to use, it was a clarification that was provided about where the new hires would be, what they would be doing, as well as part of the operations. We do understand that the IRS has been incredibly behind in even processing some tax returns. You know, how much might this be able to bring them up to speed on that front? OK, so uh, I think that's a good place to start, because before you can talk about what needs to be done, you got to talk about where they are now. And um, I went back and looked at, at the time when I was commissioner starting in 1997, so let's say 25 years ago. And uh, the IRS's total budget today is less than half, half in relation to the size of the economy that was back then, 25 years ago. And in the meantime, the Congress has passed all manner of laws uh, that it assigns the IRS to administer, ranging from, the, you know, a part of the health care system, major thing, uh, all the pandemic relief, uh, even tracking down terrorists after 9-11, all of that has been added while the budget's been cut in half. So you have a depleted agency. Um, what I think this money will do is partially, partially restore the agency over a 10-year period uh, to, to where it was, uh, provided it uses the money, you know, to be more efficient as well. Um, and I think the, um, the top priority, actually, the first priority that's going to be done the quickest is to just get service back uh, because the IRS, uh, as you probably know, deals with um, every family and every business in America. Most of it's routine, but people sometimes in that uh, complicated system, you know, need to add a question answered, get an error corrected. And right now, that's a, a really, uh, really sad situation. I mean, the IRS is answering probably maybe 10 percent of the phone calls that it gets. And the backlog is huge. Mm -hmm. And the technology is out of date compared to what you get in your average uh, bank account. So these are the first priorities. And then the longer term, of course, is to uh, cut into some of that um, unpaid taxes that is mostly on the upper income brackets. Um, as you are probably aware, sir, the, you know, a lot of those uh, Republican lawmakers were and, and those on the right we're raising the specter of armed agents storming right. people's right. homes, right? This oh, letter, yeah. this letter from these lawmakers said um, that the that the agency had five million rounds of ammunition and almost forty yeah. five hundred guns, and they were coming for your money. I mean, yeah. how do you react to something like that, um, you know, which sometimes yeah. is a powerful image for people and is obviously right. pa just absolutely false? You know. Uh, I, I would I would I would smile and, and laugh if it weren't so serious. Um, such nonsense, honestly. Um, let, let, let's be clear, okay? The IRS, back to the days when they got Al Capone, you know, during the during prohibition, um, you know, they ha have had a small portion of their agency, about two percent, two and a half percent, who are do criminal investigations of. Um, you know, m drug dealers, uh, in, in today's world, a lot of it's tracking a money trail for terrorist gangs and things like that. And so, yes, those agents are trained to carry weapons. That's about two and a half percent. It has absolutely nothing to do with the average taxpayer. Um, so that's um, just a, a very unfortunate uh, kind of uh, um, allegation that just doesn't hold up any water. The average person never even sees an IRS agent. Um, and by the way, there was a poll I just saw that gave me a little bit of encouragement because what it said, uh, and they polled, you know, the average taxpayer and 77% uh, of taxpayers, including 77% of Republicans, so they weren't worried at all about IRS agents coming after them. And they're right, <laughs> because that's not going to be what's going to happen at all. So I'm glad you're doing this show because it's just uh, very unfortunate that people would make those kind of, you know, they're just wild, wild, crazy claims. You, you mentioned that the funding would also go towards ensuring that they can crack down on some of the evasion from the highest 
levels of yeah. earners in, in those right. tax brackets. Uh, does this right. mean that that billionaires are are on the table and kind of really the ones going to be under the microscope yeah. here? Well, I, I'd say you know upper income people that you know have not all upper income people, but just those that have you know very opaque sources of income that's not reported otherwise. Uh, that's where the biggest part of the tax gap, the unpaid taxes are. And Janet Yellen put out a letter that made it clear that nobody under $400,000 income was going to see their audit rates increase. But I mean, look, it's only practical. Let me give you a statistic. If the IRS audits a person that has $400,000 of income and they only report half of it, which is for certain categories, fairly, fairly typical or accurate, uh, as compared with a $50,000 person that reports half they're going to collect 23 times as much from the $400,000 person, so much more. And so, you know, it only makes sense that what Jalen, Janet Yellen said is what you would want to do just from a practical standpoint, never mind fairness as well. I mean, that's where the money is. Um, and it's not all upper income people. It's not like, oh, if I make a, a big salary on Wall Street, I'm going to get audited. No, I mean, if you make a big salary on Wall Street, you're going to get your employers going to report it as your chart shows on the left there. And it's all reported anyway. It's only if you have, you know, some sort of income that is not reported, which is, you know, some businesses. And, and of course, all businesses, most of them are accurate, too, but some are not. And that's where the where the lost money is. And it adds up to a lot. And some people have said, well, they're going to turn over every rock. I'm just giving those statistics why that doesn't make sense. It's the upper income that has the money. And the Treasury's estimate, even after all this is done and all the hiring, they're still only going to collect about 5% of the missing income. So hardly that's going to it's a lot of money because it's a big number, but it's hardly uh, turning over every rock. It's just not the case at all. Wow. Five percent is definitely not turning over every rock. That's no, still a no. very low number. Uh, if you've got you. seven billion dollars that you're losing and you collect five percent, it's still a lot of money. Yes. But it's, it's hard turning over every rock. I mean, you're a financial uh, you know, program. Everybody can understand that. Yes, most definitely. And it's definitely worth it even to get that amount of money for sure. Um, thank you so much. This is really helpful for a lot of folks. Former Tax Commissioner Charles O. Rizzotti, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it.